this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast, James Barlow is going to drop off his mock draft. We did one at the beginning of the year with both of us, and we went back and forth with picks. I haven't done mine yet, but I will release it on NBABigBoard.com in the next few days. Like I said, this episode is all about James's mock draft, so stay tuned. We'll break this up into two parts. So this is the lottery, so stay tuned for part two coming up after this, but let's find out who James has going number one in this mock draft. Big shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Rafael Barlow, the director of scouting for NBA Big Board. To my left, but to my right on the TV screen is my brother, James Barlow. Again, this show is all about James. I'm just going to, I may chime in here and there, but we're just going to talk about his picks. But before we get started, I want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. It is the easiest and the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. All you have to do is go to prizepicks.com and use the promo code LOCKEDONNBA, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A, has to be in lowercase letters, and you can get a first deposit match up to $100. Again, prizepicks.com. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel, like, share, comment, make sure that you Get the notifications because we are bringing you NBA draft content five days a week. And later on this week, James is going to be joining me in Indianapolis. We just got that secured today. We are going to be reporting live at Basketball Without Borders because we are going to be talking about prospects in the 2025 draft. At least we're just going to start identifying them early. So stay tuned later on this week and this weekend. James and I will be live in Indianapolis, Indiana, which is our dad's hometown. So we may run into some family there, but it'll be James's first All-Star weekend. I don't know how many All-Star weekends it will be for me. My first one was Atlanta 2003, Michael Jordan's last All-Star oh, you game. You went to that? I went to that. I'll never forget it. That weekend, 50 Cent, his oh, album, 50 yeah. Cent and Freeway. Dropped albums the same week. The traffic in Atlanta was terrible. You couldn't move. The mall got shut down because there was too many people in the mall. And every car was stuck in traffic on the highway. Atlanta traffic is bad as it is. So imagine like all-star traffic. But I just remember every car was blasting every single song on Get Rich or Die Trying. So that was a... An all-star game that I, I won't forget. Anything you're looking forward to in your first all-star weekend? I'm not looking forward to the cold, man. I've been in Texas. You see, I wear shorts every day. So I got to go find where, where my pants are, man, and figure it out that. But no, I'm interested in seeing the, the the young fellas at Basketball Without Borders. That'll be my first like experience scouting an event like that, at least for, for foreign guys. Yeah, this will be my... I think third. I went 2020. Josh Giddy was in that one. And then last year, Nikola Topic, T. John Salon, Maras Bozellas was, was in that one. So we'll, we'll see what names emerge this year. All right. It's time. I see that list, too. It's time. The Detroit Pistons. <laughs> Based off of the records for today, February 13th, the Detroit Pistons have the number one pick in the 2024 NBA draft. If you are selecting for the Detroit Pistons, what direction are you going in and why? I'm Troy Weaver, right? You know, Troy Weaver don't care about... He are cares. you James Barlow? You James okay, Barlow. I'm James Barlow. So this is all about what... what? Ooh, I think, you know what, I'm still going to go with Alex Saar. Right. It, it doesn't make sense, but we're in the talent acquisition phase right now. Maybe he can play the four. Maybe the jump shot improves eventually, but that front line of Saar... And Jalen Duran, that's some athleticism right there. And you're just going to have to find a way to make it work. I know that they struggled with spacing before, but they kind of cleaned it up a little bit. And then they're starting to play Ivy and Cade together. So I'm going to go with Sar, and then we're just going to have to figure it out. Uh, you know, this is going to be a long time, uh, long-term process as far as the rebuild. So I'm not going to be afraid of 
anything in that situation. You know what I don't understand? How do you play, and I like Killian Hayes, but how do you play Killian Hayes ahead of Jaden Ivey and then you cut or wave Killian Hayes? Like, he, he just still waving. doesn't have a job, right? He never. He I mean, I guess he just probably got clear away. I, for some reason, I think he's going to end up in San Antonio. And just because I mean, it's it, the end of the year tryout or whatever. Yeah, it makes sense. But it's sense. crazy. Like, you were playing him ahead of Ivy. Starting him. Starting him, and then you wave him and get nothing in return. And then Ivy's been playing playing good lately. That's that's just weird to me. But So so how do you think he fits? Sar? Yep. Uh, I, I guess you just bank on him being a four, maybe looking like uh, Evan Mobley. Out there, but also the Cavs ran off this, what, 15 out of 16 stretch when they simplified their overlap as far as, like, two ball handlers, two bigs. Uh, it's going to be difficult to say that Sar isn't number one. Maybe in a, an alternate universe they go at Risa Shea and just draft based on fit. But I don't really like doing that in this situation just because, like, we're trying to get better and winning is still years away. And we'll just, just kind of have to figure it out. Again, maybe Saar becomes a, a decent enough shooter where he can play the four in the spot. Yeah, I think Mobley's at like 38% from three this year. There you go. And just so, uh, But he was somebody that, coming out of school, you, you thought he was going to be a good shooter. I mean, the numbers weren't great at, at USC, if I remember correctly. And then over time, he's kind of developed into a good shooter. But it's been very quiet. You don't hear a lot about Evan Mobley. All right, the number two pick goes to the Washington Wizards. I just watched them play last night against the Dallas Mavs. If you're Washington, what direction are you going in? I'm still going with Topic at uh, number two for Washington. Nikola Topic, the point guard from Serbia. Yeah, we're going to go with the big point guard. They're in full rebuild. Uh, just Ray Kuzma could have got traded. He decided, nah, he's cool. Maybe he is moving in the offseason. I don't necessarily think Tyus is going to stay there. Again, Tyus can play. It's not knock on Tyus, mm -hmm. but, you know, he's probably better off in a, a winning situation. Yep. But uh, you go Topic, then you got – I think they're stuck with Poole for a little bit because his stock <laughs> is, 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 is tanking right now. He had like four points last night. He I don't like even remember 12, him man. in the game. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with Poole, man. I think he's got some PTSD still from that Draymond situation. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> but uh, I don't mean <laughs> – but I'm, I'm going with Topic yet too. And we're just going to go – that's a, actually a really, really, really big team as far as like if you go Topic at the point, um, Poole, Koulibaly, Avdia, Avdia been hooping. Hooping. And then – yeah, that's what I'm doing. Bagley. Bagley. I guess I, if, if they decide to play Bagley after five. And then it's assuming if they move Kuzma, too. Yep. So, yeah, that's 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 a lot of length. Uh, guys are switchable. I think it could work. All right, and number three, the San Antonio Spurs. If you're the San Antonio Spurs, who are you taking at number three? All right, so this doesn't match my big board, but, hey, we're going to rob Dillingham number three. So you're going to rob Dillingham at number three. You know what? There's probably people that are gonna think it's crazy, but it, it it's not as crazy as it sounded. Why is it crazy? You know, I mean, again, when we say you had Rob Dilly at number five, I said that it's uh, in November, right? In November, it sounded crazy. Now mm. people are starting to come along to it with, with this class. I think it's possible. I, I think if you're San Antonio, you can swing for the for the fences. If you consider that swinging for the fences, I keep hearing now that they think that. Trey Young to San Antonio could, could be mm. a possibility. Well, that changes everything, obviously. But I if, mean, they still have they they have to make make a trade. I guess get their. I don't. I don't know. But. I don't know how that works either because I don't know if without looking at picks, like what does Atlanta? What does San Antonio have that Atlanta would want back to garner a all star talent? You know what I'm saying? Like that's a lot. Yeah. Who, Regardless who, of what Trey Young's reputation may be around the league, like he's still like 28 and 10. Yep. All right. When we return, we're going to go a little bit more in depth of why James believes that Rob Dillingham at number three is a good fit for San Antonio. Stay tuned. All right. Let's talk about prize picks because prize picks is daily fantasy made easy and james is a huge 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 prize picks believer and with prize picks all you have to do is pick two to six players and you're going against the projected numbers 
And now for something different, it is demon time. Have you done that? The demons and, and man, the... I got scared last night. <laughs> so, it is demon time on Prize Picks, and you can now win up to one hundred times your money with as little as four correct picks. You could turn ten dollars into a thousand. That, that's a, that's a good flip. I got scared, bro. Demons and goblins are the newest and the most exciting way to play prize picks. Squares marked with red demons, I don't like the word demons, man, or green goblins get you different payouts. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. And what makes prize picks different is they have injury insurance. So again, you're just picking two to six players. You're going against their projections. And if you have a guy that gets injured in the first half, he gets rebooted. For the next game, if he doesn't come back to play in the second half, Prize Picks is again daily fantasy made easy. It is the number one daily sports or daily fantasy sports game in North America. So check it out, PrizePicks.com. All you have to do is download the app, go to PrizePicks.com, locked on NBA, and if you use the promo code locked on NBA in lowercase, you can get up to a hundred dollar deposit match. Again, PrizePicks.com slash locked on NBA. For deposit match up to one hundred dollars, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports twenty four seven streaming channel on YouTube, and now you can find it on Amazon Fire TV. Locked On is making moves, doing big things in the world, and Locked On Sports Today is here for you twenty four seven, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts. Plus, our national shows covering every single league. So find Locked On Sports today on Amazon Fire TV. All right, you selected Rob Dillingham at number three for San Antonio. I did. We talked a little bit about Trey Young, but we're just going to go with Dillingham right now. How does Rob fit with the San Antonio Spurs? Hey, man, look, you got him. If you have questions about Rob Dillingham's defense because you think he's 6'1", or 6'2", or whatever. I mean, we just saw Wimby get 10 blocks last night. So he's just cleaning all of that up. You have a dynamic score off the dribble, one of the best shooters off the dribble in the draft. I think a, a Wimby Dillingham pick and roll would be very, very difficult to deal with for the next four or five years. Yeah, I like the pick. I, I, I like it. All right, the Charlotte Hornets at number four. Charlotte has revamped their roster, redid their roster. Adding Trey Young and my man Misich, who I really liked when he played for for FSU. Trey Man, Trey Man, you said Man. I thought I think I did. Trey Man, Grant Williams, and Seth Curry hooping in their hometowns. But Charlotte is a, a team that I, I think that they're obviously they're going to go in a different direction. Mitch Kupchak got promoted to the front office, new ownership. Maybe a new coach next year. So I think it's time. Not disrespecting him. I just feel like he had a quote the other day where he just he looked like he tired, man. Yeah, I think they got – I just think they had too many young dudes, and I think they just well, started from, I from got scratch. Some bad news. They about to draft another young dude. Well, I think they needed a new set of young dudes, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, that's perfect sense. <laughs> All right. If you're Charlotte, who are you taking at number four? All right, so this one came down to uh, a preference thing, and that's all it should be. About. It really it is, and I'm gonna go with Cody Williams from Colorado right here. Mm. So I'm thinking Lamelo. Who we six eight you six big. seven? Oh, yeah, Man, I sound Pause. like <laughs> week six seven six eight. We got Lamelo, Brandon Miller. We go with Cody. We go with Miles, and then we go with you know, Miles is, you know. Whatever, yeah. If he comes back, if he comes I, I, back, I think. I mean, for some reason, I think he. And this is just my personal opinion. I think that he declined to be traded because he thinks or believes he's going to get a bag somewhere this summer, and I think it might be Detroit. I have a different opinion on Miles. I think he stayed in Charlotte because the fan base has accepted him for everything that goes and on. And he had back to back forty point games. I mean, it, well, here's the thing: you don't have to rebrand yourself to a whole different fan base. Like they know what time it is with him and his situation, and they've moved mm-hmm. past it or looking past it, and it's just easier so, to stay there. Yeah, that that definitely makes sense. But Detroit is not home, but it's close to home. 
and they have a bunch of money that they got to spend this summer. So I think that's just, just my opinion. All right, so so you said Cody Williams at the so three. Lamelo, Cody, L- Lee Miller, uh, Mark Williams, and then if Miles situation, or if you want a veteran, you want an adult in the room, as one of the coaches said, you go with Grant Williams at the four. You got Trey Mann coming off the bench, getting buckets, crossing dudes. Uh, Trey Mann is actually what you wanted book night to be. Yeah. Yep. All right, number five, the Portland Trail Blazers. Who do you have the Blazers selecting at number five? Uh, we're going with Reese Shea, number five. How does he fit in Portland? You play him at the three. Okay, so you got Scoop. Looks, yeah, so you go with. And we're just yeah. going future. I mean, we're. I won't include Brogdon. I don't know if he's going to be there. I'm surprised he's still there now. So you go Scoop. Yeah, I already didn't want to be moved. So you go Scoop, Ant Simons. Yeah, Reese Shea. You forgot Shaden. I I not really. I mean, I like Shaden better. I think Shaden is better long term. But okay, let's find. Let's say, let's say Shaden. And then Jeremy Grant doesn't want to be moved. He's stuck. He's staying there. And then you got DeAndre Ayton. And I guess you say Richard Shade is your six man. Or if you want to say we're bringing some fire power, fire power off the bench, and we'll start Shaden just because we wanted to sit here and um, maybe it's a better fit to start Richard Shade over Shaden, and let Shaden get the higher usage off the bench. Not okay. to say that he's a better player, but you know how it is. You don't want a bunch of guy like Reese Shea's role in Portland is exactly what he's doing right now. Yeah, he doesn't need the ball. Exactly. Not a lot of touches. All right, number six, the Memphis Grizzlies. Who are you taking at number six for Memphis? I have a guy that I have in mind, but it's not you know, it's, it's all about you today. I don't really have him that high, but let's go with Tyler Smith at number six. All right, and Tyler fit, Smith at number six. We're kind of going off of need some because they do need a big, and maybe you say, man, that's two dudes that might not rebound, though, him and Jaron Jackson. And they, they traded Steven Adams, like I said they would. I mentioned that on another pod. But I heard they got something cooking. Nobody told me what, but they believe that Kleiman has, Zach Kleiman, that is, has something cooking. Well, if they have something cooking, I still think they need help. Uh, with a four or five man rotation anyway, because they traded away. Uh, I was gonna call him something else, Xavier Tillman, and then that'd be I think this is year two off of uh, Achilles surgery for Brandon Clark. So, yeah, I think I'm gonna go Tyler Smith here, number seven, which is the San Antonio Spurs. Again, this is a pick from Toronto. Who are you taking at number seven if you're the San Antonio Spurs? Maras Bozelis. Maras Bozelis from the G League Ignite, who had a, a good game last night. Yes. Showed some flashes. I, I think that if he... I'm continues, so up and down on Maras. <laughs> I think every everybody is. The flashes are definitely there. But, I mean, the flashes are definitely there. But his flashes are really, really good. That's why I think there's still an outside chance that he could go number one. How would Maras fit in San Antonio? So, I don't know what position Maras plays, but it doesn't matter, right? So, you can play him on the wing. Uh, he can handle a little bit. The shooting would need to improve. But, like, you could just bank on his upside. And you want to take the pieces of the good that he does and hope that it, like, works out for him. And also, with them having another first-round pick and if in my draft in Dillingham, then you got Wimby. Like, there isn't a ton of pressure on him to be, like – Great. Like, the fan base would uh, have an opportunity to be patient with him. Now, would Wimby be patient with him? I don't know, because didn't he say the other day he needed some old dudes on his team? (laughs) Wimby's different. (laughs) Wimby's different. All right, when we return, we'll cover picks 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Again, this is James's mock draft. I guess we'll call it James's mock draft 1.0. It's his first individual mock draft. Stay tuned. This segment is brought to you by Better Help because sometimes, maybe more times than sometimes, we all need the opportunity to get some things off our chest. Whether it's big or small, there are certain things that can really, really bother us and have an impact on our day and our moods and so on. So that's why it's very important to speak with someone that is unbiased on your life. And therapy can be different for everyone. Most of us have bigger problems than our favorite football team. So if you are a 49ers fan, 
I understand that you are a little bit disappointed in the way the Super Bowl turned out, but there are things that are definitely bigger than sports, and it is very important for you to get those off of your chest. So if you are thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It is entirely online, and it is designed to be flexible to fit your schedule. So check it out, betterhelp.com. That is better, H-E-L-P.com. And if you use the promo code LOCKEDONNBA, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A, you can get 10% off your first month. That is better, H-E-L-P.com slash LOCKEDONNBA. All right, let's recap the draft so far. James had the Detroit Pistons selecting Alex Saar at number one. At number two, he had the Washington Wizards going with Nikola Topic. At number three, the San Antonio Spurs and Rob Dillingham. At number four, he had Cody Williams going to the Charlotte Hornets. At number five, Zachary Reese goes to the Portland Trailblazers. At number six, the Memphis Grizzlies selected Tyler Smith who was the biggest riser. And then at number seven, the San Antonio Spurs, James had them taking Maras Bazelis. All right, at number eight, it is the Houston Rockets. I don't know where a rookie can come in and play. I got one for you. All right, who is it? Reed Shepard. Reed Shepard at number eight. How would Reed Shepard fit in with the Houston Rockets at number eight? So Fred's got signed a three-year deal. I think two are guaranteed. Two are guaranteed. They can move on from him. I think they need to chill out on that playoff mandate that they're trying to push right now. I also have concerns about what Amin Thompson is long-term with his shooting. So, in comes Reed Shepard. Reed has a burner. Reed can play on the ball, off the ball, and Reed gives me James Brogdon, Malcolm Brogdon, like, Vibes. Okay. All right. He's got like a little business crossover, sneaky athletic, so that's not just a racial thing, right? On the ball, off the ball, can shoot, good playmaker, good defender. So if you don't think Amin is your long term point guard, or if you feel like maybe you want to get rid of uh, Jalen Green, you know, whatever decided, whatever direction they decide to go, I feel like Reed Shepard compliments whoever, whichever guard. Is there a long term, whichever guard that they want to keep? And he just he he fits exactly what they would need in Houston. Okay. All right. At number nine, the Atlanta Hawks. Who are you taking if you are the Atlanta Hawks at number nine? Yeah, perfect situation for the uh for this gentleman here. We're gonna go with Ron Holland at number nine in Atlanta. Okay, why is it the perfect situation? Because you are playing with a point guard, two point guards really. Who are going to spoon feed you? Where, like I said, I mentioned on a previous podcast, I think Ron can average twenty one day without plays being drawn up for him. Mm-hmm. And I feel like in that situation, again, we clean up the jump shot. Uh, you don't turn down open threes, but like he can get it off the muscle in Atlanta, and they do need wing help in Atlanta because DeAndre, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Hunter's. You know, he's got his health concerns. I don't know how they feel about Sadiq long term. I know um, Bogdan is a they just, they just signed him. They did, they but to an he's always he's always going to be movable for for picks because people love him. So, and I, then I you still like got AJ Griffin. He doesn't really play for them right now. <laughs> Kobe Bufkin. He's he's out the rotation too. I'm just I'm not no disrespect to them, but like I'm not gonna not draft a wing. Yeah, for them. Like they're gonna, somebody's got they got to duke it out to see what was gonna happen. Yeah, I don't know what direction the Hawks should go in. I really don't. They have. I mean, they got depth on the front court. I mean, they have, they got talent. They have talent across the board. It's just I agree. not leading to to win. I mean, they've they've been a little bit better lately. I mean, they've won six out of their last ten. Maybe that's enough to to get them out of the lottery. But I, I just don't know the direction of the Atlanta Hawks. All right, the Oklahoma City Thunder. The annual Oklahoma City Thunder pick in the lottery, These and they have the next two. Picks 10 and 11. This pick is from Houston. If you're the Thunder, who are you taking at number 10? My biggest riser, Keyshawn George out of Miami. Oh, you're taking Keyshawn in the lottery. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Okay. Explain. One of the best shooters in the draft. Uh, Oklahoma City likes big wings. 
that can do a little bit of everything, and he can do a lot of bit of everything. So you want to you I you ultimately think that Josh Giddy is not going to be in their long term you know plans, right? Which is crazy because a At year one. ago, it seemed a year and a half ago, it seemed like he was a big part of their future. Teams aren't even guarding him. I was at the game against the Mavs this weekend. And I, if I'm not mistaken, he might have been like three or fourteen from the floor, but three eleven for three, and he was wide open. They didn't even rotate to him. So, what did you say? Teams aren't guarding him. Yep. So let's 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 add a young fella that's six eight that can handle. That's that is right now at the college level a forty percent three point shooter. Okay. Like it makes sense. And then they just traded for Gordon Hayward. Gordon is, you know, when he plays, he's really good. The problem is he just doesn't play a lot. So I think he's gonna play in the postseason. I yeah. think those giddy minutes are gonna exactly. <laughs> gonna but shrink. you got to think even longer term because you know Gordon's in his thirties. I feel like Keyshawn George at six eight with his point forward ability, like he fits next to. Uh, I think he gives you what Josh Giddy, what you wanted from Josh Giddy. I mean, the passing may not be as good, but it's still really, really he's good. He's making up for it. You know, Gordon Hayward and Paul George are the only two members left from the 2010 NBA draft class. That's crazy. Yep. All right. The Thunder back on the clock at number 11. This pick is from Utah. I don't know what trade this was, but this pick <laughs> Man, is from Utah. Man, who knows? They probably don't even know where that draft pick came from. So, number 11, we're going to go with Deron Holmes out of Dayton. Let's draft another big here. Another skinny big and see how it works. You have a backup big. I know they were they were aiming for a bruiser. At the trade deadline, and they ended up getting Bismack Biombo. They got Bismack Biombo. It wasn't a trade, but it was. I mean, you know, they picked him up for a long term. But I think again, if you want to go the two big lineup, I feel like Chet and Deron Holmes can interchange because both guys can stretch the floor. Both guys are vertical lob threats. Both guys are going to block shots. So you really, you really, really like Deron Holmes? Yeah, man. Why not? I feel like he's probably the second best big. Or I should say the second most ready big in this draft. Do you believe the Thunder need a big that's ready as opposed to a developmental big? I feel like they're, they they're, go either way. They though. go either way, but you know what? I think their timeline is like very close to what it was the, the KD uh, Westbrook Harden time. Like you got really good guys now. Like let's try to like see how far we can go. Maybe you get lucky like they did. Not lucky, but maybe you get hot earlier than what you expected. And they went to the finals that year with the Heat against the Heat. All right, number 12, it is the Chicago Bulls, another team that is in a weird situation. They didn't make any moves at the deadline. I believe the GM feels like the roster is good enough to compete right now. Anyway, here's Chicago. Who are you taking at number 12? Stefan Castle out of UConn. Okay, explain. Big guard, does a little bit of everything. The jump shot looks like it's starting to come along a little bit. Um, he's ageless, but you know, <laughs> I call him the Kobe. Demar Derozan is, he, you know, he's probably gonna resign. But you got to think they still need some wing depth, guard depth. I know they Caruso is a, a lot like Bogdanovich, where they're always gonna get phone calls about him mm -hmm. uh, trading him. So I feel like Stefan Castle. I I still am running with it. I still believe it. I still think he has the talent to be the best player in this draft. He just got to clean up some of those shooting concerns, and if you catch him at twelve with the with Kobe White figuring it out, like I think that could work. So you could really have it. It might be the the all potential team, but Kobe White, Stephon Castle, Patrick Williams, like I like it. Yeah, he has to be more aggressive as a shooter. I saw a play against Providence, and I posted on my Twitter account seven seconds. He had the ball for seven seconds before he shot it. Like, he dribbled, dribbled, and then actually he did pass it. So he dribbled, dribbled, and then he passed it to a guy, and it was supposed to be like a DHO, and the defender was sagging back, so they couldn't do anything. Then the guy gave it back to him, and then he shot it. But he was so reluctant to shoot. It was seven seconds that went off the clock from the time he got the ball to the time he shot it because he just didn't want to shoot it. And it was Devin Carter that was guarding him, and he was like foot in the paint. And that's crazy. I forget what game it was, but he shot one three or four feet behind the line just confidently. And he was, yes, he was wide open, but he caught it in rhythm. He let it go. I think that's like that same game he hit two threes. So, like, he's got to figure out what's going on with his shooting. But, like, if he does that, I, I still believe he could be the best player in this draft. Okay. At number 13, it is the Portland Trailblazers back on the clock again. At number five, you have him taking Zachary Risa Shea. 
13. Who do you got Portland taking? This is tough, man. I think we're going to go with Tijan Saloon. Okay, so you got you got two French guys from the French under-18 team. Yes. That didn't win the gold medal. <laughs> they did not win the gold medal. All right, so how does T-John fit in with, with Portland? All right, so we had talked about uh, Jeremy Grant saying he wants to stay put. Maybe he has a change of heart in the summertime. So you're going to need some forward depth. And, again, I know they got guys, Tumani Carr, uh, Samai- Kamara. <laughs> Kamara, excuse me. I was thinking about the next. I was saying Jabari Walker. Uh, shout out to Samaki and his draft suit. Somebody's got to bring back that top hat this, <laughs> this summer. <laughs> he looked like he was in the do or die video. Oh, <laughs> man. Pope pimping. <laughs> but nah, I, I would go with another forward here if I was Portland. Like I said, I don't know. Jeremy Grant, maybe like, you know what? I'm I'm cool in this rebuild. Maybe I do want to actually play for something. And I don't know because I thought that was the reason why he signed with Detroit because he wanted to man, be the man. Look, look, it's, look. I don't want to call him selfish, but it look. sounds like he wants to. Can I them, say this, Ralph? Get them look. shots up. Between him and DeAndre Ayton, hey, man, Portland got to Portland gotta figure out what's going on, man, because them dudes are just cool. I, I like Grant. I, I really like Grant. It's not about his talent. It's just like he could go. He could pick a, a destination almost yeah. and play for something. He's like, nah, I'm good. I guess some guys want to move their family. All right, yeah. wrapping it up at number fourteen, the New Orleans Pelicans, the last pick in the lottery. Who do you have the Pelicans selecting? I am gonna go with. The hometown favorite, the hometown, our hometown kid. We're gonna go with Hunter Salas right here in New Orleans. Okay, so your your draft looks totally different than most, which I I love that. I respect Shh. that. Too many consensus Yo. in a wide open draft. Well, why why Hunter Salas at fourteen? All right, so again, I mentioned it before. C.J. McCollum is in his thirties. Again, he's not really slowing down. He actually had a he had a video. I forget. They were asking him about his shooting. He's like, I'm not taking any more long twos. I'm shooting these every three every dribble pull up off the every three pointer off the dribble I'm taking it and he's like I'm having my, my most efficient season but ultimately I think uh New Orleans is going to have to move on from Najee Marshall not because he can't play because of money you're mm-hmm. going to have some money issues and let's say you want to keep that wing rotation flowing and I feel like Hunter would be a great situation cuz the shooting's improved we know he defends. He does a little bit of everything, and you can play him alongside a superstar. He can play off the ball and maybe be an initiator too as well since they don't really play a backup point guard. Yeah, he's had some really, really good games down the stretch. Had a big game against Duke. Had a – I forgot who they played. I know NC State had a big game against NC State. A lot of points in the second half that game. A lot of points. The shooting has improved below 40%, below like – I think he's like 31% for two years at Gonzaga, up to 40% now. He is one of the biggest risers in this 2024 draft. All I right. think I had him at like 65% at the rim. Yeah, I mean, he's 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 been efficient. Shout out to, to Hunter Salas. All right, let's give a recap. Detroit, you had the Detroit Pistons taking Alex Saar. Yes. You had Nikola Topic going number two to the Washington Wizards yes. at number three. Rob Dillingham to the San Antonio Spurs. Number four, Cody Williams to the Charlotte Hornets. At number five, the first of their two French picks, you had the Portland Trail Blazers oui, selecting oui. Zachary Riesesche. At number six, you had the Memphis Grizzlies going with Tyler Smith. Number seven, you had the San Antonio Spurs going with Maras Buzelis. Yes. At number eight, you had the Houston Rockets. Taking Reed Shepard. Reed Shepard. Felt good about that one. At number nine, you had the Atlanta Hawks going with Ron Holland. Felt good about that one too. All right. At number ten and eleven, you have the Oklahoma City Thunder back to back. And who were those picks? Keyshawn George and Deron Holmes. And then at number twelve, you have the Chicago Bulls going with guard help and Stephon Castle. Castle. Yes. And then thirteen, the Portland Trailblazers selected T. John Salon. And at number 14, wrapping up the lottery, you have Wake Forest's Hunter Salas going to the New Orleans Pelicans via the Los Angeles Lakers. I guess that has to be part of the Anthony Davis trade. Well, that wraps up this mock draft 1.0 for James Bartle. Stay tuned in the next episode. We are going to cover picks 15 through 30. Once again, it's Rafael Barlow and my brother James, and we are out.